the young Israeli that were going with the flag. And uh, you feel that uh, whenever you do that, you are uh, do, revolving the, the, all the ashes of all the, the Occidental civilization. Mm -hmm. What uh, do you have to do with, with humility? Why do you say that we are meddling uh, with the, all the ashes of the Occidental civilization? Because, you know, going to Auschwitz is not a simple thing. Auschwitz and Birkenau. This is the biggest cemetery of university, of the Jewish people also, and, uh, and of humanity. This is the biggest genocide that has been done in the modern times that we can remember. And I have some critics about the way sometimes that Israel as a country and the young Israeli as people are going to Auschwitz with flags and, uh, and um, I think that I'm, I'm, I'm opposed to, to the use of Israeli flags in Auschwitz, to any flag. Because Auschwitz, Auschwitz, Birkenau, all the concentration camps were, is, uh, they are a sort of a big, big cemetery of our civilization. And not only of the Jewish people, and I say that as a Jew. And uh, this is a sort of taking a monopoly on these, just for us. And I think that for the education of the young Israelis, it would be better to learn more and better history, their own history, the history of the Second World War, than just to go for a sort of demonstration. This is not a demonstration. Going to Auschwitz is like going in a cemetery. If I go in a cemetery, I go with no head, I go in Hum humility, I don't make a manifestation out of that, and, uh, and I, I don't wish to do this that way, and I don't, I'm not sure that uh, the, Israeli, the young Israelis who come back from Auschwitz, and they say after that that they, are f they feel more nationalist, I'm also opposed to the use of Auschwitz in politics. So, if I can not go, with this, I will not do. And my sons did not do that. They did not do that that way. We were there this year with my father, but not with flags, but with a group and, and with a sort of... This year, yeah. And four years ago, I wasn't there with him. And this year, in 2015, I was with him. Because this year was a celebration of the 70th uh, uh, anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. So my father went with a group of teachers from Belgium, and I joined him with two of my three sons. And uh, so it was not a Jewish uh, uh, thing, because the teachers from Belgium were non-Jewish. My father was not with a group of young, he was with a group of adults, and I felt more comfortable to be there with him in those conditions. This is how I, I wanted to do it. You know, being to Auschwitz was to me more symbolic than uh, a thing that I really wanted to do. I, I think that to me, I felt when I was an adult that I don't need to go to Auschwitz. That I'm not obliged to go to Auschwitz with or without my father. That I don't need to be there to understand Auschwitz. I think I read a lot. I have my father's story, our past, family past. And I think that I can understand quite a lot about the Nazi ideology about the final solution and, and every year you have more information, more books and more and more documentaries on that. So some of the young that are taken to Auschwitz, they know very few about Auschwitz. So when they are there this is a shock. Okay? And they come back under shock and and I don't need that shock. I was not under shock when I was there. I was sixty. I was not a young boy. But I, I was, I'm happy that I did it for my father. But for myself, the most important thing was my book and not going to Auschwitz. Because my book is a process of a long personal work, of introspection, of questioning, of uh, searching for answers, of saying things, of, of opening the wounds of the past and healing them by the book. 
and going to Auschwitz was more symbolic. It was important, but not really necessary. It was just necessary for my father, and after the book I was ready for it. And uh, what do you feel when Netanyahu uses the Holocaust? I, I, if you want my answers on that, you can go on my blog and see how I draw that. I think that uh, Netanyahu, not only him, but Netanyahu is uh, criticizing when others are making instrumentalization of the Holocaust against the state of Israel, but he himself is doing instrumentalization, I think, in the United Nations, in Israel as a prime minister. And this is why we are stuck and we don't, we don't progress in our, in our society today, because we are led by people who had that sort of trauma. And it is, a, you know, I think that the, the one of the good things that happened to a lot of Jewish philosophers and Jewish writers after the war, those who began to write, like Elie Wiesel and others, they became also involved in the storytelling and the telling and the search of the Holocaust or genocides of other people in the 20th century, the Armenian one and the Tutsi one. And, and I think that it makes Jews being again universal, which is the best part I found in Judaism. This is this opening to the world and what we can bring to the world as Jews. And, uh, and, and what Netanyahu, but not him, what the state of Israel, because Netanyahu is the state of Israel for today. He represents the state of Israel all over the world. He's making a sort of mo monopolization of this. And, uh, and a little bit like father. Yes, but my father has an excuse. <laughs> Netanyahu doesn't have the same excuse because my father do it because he was psychologically destroyed. And Netanyahu makes it because he's a politician. And he tried to manipulate in a way to instrumentalize and I'm totally opposed upon that. And in the page 59, you say, I don't have the right to blame my father. It is all Hitler's fault. And uh, many of the second generation, you said, have, su have committed suicide. Do you know why? No, I don't know why. This is... There are, there are, you know, psychologists and psychoanalysts who, who make a field of research on, on the second generation syndrome or, or post-trauma. And there are figures that show that, let's say, that the rate of suicides in this very special population is higher than in the average population. There are a lot of reasons that I, I don't really know, I cannot really explain. But, but I think that... Uh, uh, I could just put it on my book. I could just say it because this is a fact. This is not something that I think. This is something that I know. Because I have friends who are in that field of research. There are books. And, uh, but, 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 but when you say that I, I take my, my head in my hands and say that I don't have the right to blame my father, it was because I was so angry on him during the Shiva on my brother because that was the moment he began to speak about his Holocaust and not about my brother. And I was trying to, I was somehow, I felt very bad that I, I'm angry with my father. And also by the fact that I could not say him. That was impossible to hurt him on that very moment. And, and I said, okay, I, I, I understand that I'm suffering, but anyhow, if I take some perspective, this is not my father's fault. This is Hitler's fault. And, and, and Hitler's is also, somehow, I suggest to the reader that there's a connection between my brother's suicide and Hitler, or my brother's suicide and my father's past. But I can't explain it, and I don't have to do that. I let the reader understand and, and, and make his own opinion on that. And on the page 64, you say that, you say that the he said, the example of life of dad and mom is sufficiently good for me. What, what did he want to say? What did he mean? This is a thing that he could not say to my parents. Parents have to help kids build themselves. 
and to confront life. And he felt he was not prepared by his parents, my parents, for that. And, uh, and it is, that was a way to point a, a sort of responsibility, a part of the responsibility of on a decision to go away from the world. And uh, he could not say this to them. He just wrote a letter that he loved them, which was quite a wise decision from him. But to me, his uh, older brother, he wrote the truth. And I kept it for me. And in the book, I open it. In page 78, you say, and me, I'm asking myself, is it better silence or word? I wish I had an answer. Do you have an answer? No, I don't have an answer. I, I, I have in front of me a woman whose mother talked, talked to and explained. And you have in front of you a man whose father did not tell. And the result is that we have suffered each of us in a different way. Because on the Holocaust, silence or words are, are, are the same strengths and they make damages around. Because the Holocaust is too big to, to, be, to be understood and to be accepted. And, uh, uh, and this is also a way to say, I cannot blame my father. Even if, I, if he had spoken to us, I am not sure that our, our family situation and our the feeling of each of us and our lives would have been better. I'm not sure. So this is also a way to, 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 to not to blame him. This is a very important page of the book in which also I explain that in his life he used to be a victim and he became a hero. And he, he used to keep silence and he began to talk. And this is a turning point in his life. But to me, it happened too late to really influence me in my own, you know, self-building. Okay, but uh, but also I can understand that he could not do it before. Because uh, the very big and big question is why? Why did this happen? Do you have an answer? No. Nobody has an answer. <laughs>